my father was a, a, a very versatile storyteller um, and he would give, sometimes he would give detail um, and sometimes he would allude to things, sometimes he'd use metaphors. My mother was a bit quieter, uh, but interestingly a bit much more blunter in terms of how she would give over information about my, our past. Um, when they both passed, mum in 2000, dad in 2008, um, when I went back to the country of my birth, which was Trinidad, I guess we have a home there, and uh, I looked in the cupboard and there was this uh, a series of plastic bags, and I knew that those were the letters that my father referred to. Not my mother, but my father referred to uh, 50 years before, which uh, were the letters primarily from that time when they were separated. In 1961, and my mother was pregnant with, with, with me, and so that was a huge scandal. Uh, and they were reunited after a year. But the main means of communication was by letter. And what I discovered in, in those letters was uh, not just from, from my mother to my father, my father's replies, um, but were letters from grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles, cousins, um, about some relating to, the, to, to me, but mostly about what was going on in their lives. Maybe there's an interesting story here if I go back and then see how that makes sense in terms of the person that I've become. Well, I think it's, you know, one of the greatest gifts that my parents, if not the greatest gift, that my parents could leave to me, or, or certainly my father could leave to me. Um, more than money, more than a house, more than land. There were uh, eight memoirs that he had done to himself when he was 35. There were the letters that they, mum and dad wrote to each other 40 years after they were married, 30 years after they migrated to, to the UK. How they reviewed their lives. But I never saw those letters, I never got a hint. I got a hint about the airmail letters, 61, 62, 1961, 62. But, and what might be in them, but I never actually laid hands on them. And when I actually started to open them, it was, I mean, it took me, when I first discovered them, I, I just didn't want to touch or go near them because I knew I wouldn't be able to stop reading. And as I subsequently found out, there were over 300 letters just from the 61, 62 period. And in those were gems, you know, what happened when I was born from hour to hour because my father wasn't there. What happened when, uh, you know, when a decision had to be made, should we go, should we not go to the UK? You know, my dad's uh, political um, astuteness in terms of understanding what was going on in the UK with regard to mass migration from the Caribbean. You know, getting all the preparations for, for travelling, um, all the things that my mother had to leave behind, most importantly, her family. And it was really interesting for me that during her life, she never really referred to that period. Just little snippets of when we were on the boat, the SS Columbia, that took 21 days to get to Southampton from Trinidad. You know, that I was a baby, five and a half months old. The hardest thing um, is to go deeper, to really uh, hack away at that rock encasing around the past to, to get to the gold, which is a, a real um, connection between what you think happened and where there may be evidence that may be leading you down a different path. And really to, to centre yourself in such a way that you can, you can produce a more or less accurate reflection of that time. Uh, rather than a pastiche or, or, or something that, that pulls its punches. Um, that's the difficult, that's the challenging thing for me as a, as a writer. I think the thing that I would say to other writers is don't give up. Uh, I'd say to them, be true to yourself, be true to your vocation. Uh, it's like anything else that you desire to do in life. 
Uh, you have to have the discipline, you have to have the resourcefulness, and, and writing is a lonely thing in many ways. Um, and it's very, it's very tricky for me to explain to people when I say I'm a writer. They look at me with a blank face and, and say, what do you write? As if that in itself is what it's all about. No, it's, it's, it's that blank page. It's that silence. It's that correction, recorrection of, of, of text. Um, and, if it's, and sitting with that and, and working with that and being happy with that, or as happy as you can be. Um, and then letting it go, detaching. The first day that I went to this school, the very first day, Mum got me all dressed up, you know, I had the uniform, and this is one, and you want to have a look at it, and if we start sharing our stories, those will be the bridges to understanding and to growing. And so I'd like to give you with that for many. Sure. Performing is, is a very, um, it's a, it's, for me it's a very emotional uh, experience. Uh, there are times when I'm reluctant to perform uh, and the, the point that when I, was, I had my poetry looked at, the point that the, the, this particular poet made was that there's a very, there's a significant difference between performed words, performed poetry, and what's written in a book. And my preference at the moment is, is to perform it. There is more to black than the color of your skin. It's your stance, attitude. Black is a color, not a thought or feeling that comes with the words. When I meet or see a person of color, it is of their actions and deeds that I take note. The rest is ephemeral.